as Andrea was uh, mentioning, Olink is focusing on a biomarker discovery. And I thought I would just start with a little bit about the background of biomarkers. So the term has been used since the early 80s, but it was in the la uh, late 90s as NIH started to define it as anything that could indicate a disease state or any other physical state of an organism. But it's, I would say during the last decade, it's becoming a growing impact of, of biomarker, uh, both in, in research, in publications, and also in, in public media. Here are just some examples uh, of some articles you could read about in uh, the New York Times about, about uh, finding markers uh, of aging. A Finnish group uh, developed a death test that you could take, for example, that could say if you had a higher risk of, of dying in five years. I don't know who would like to take such a test, but the Finns have it. Uh, also been large grant applications within the biomarker focus. So uh, a growing impact of biomarkers during the last 10 years, I would say. So the opportunities for developing more effective therapeutics increases with the use of, of validated biomarkers. And this can give new insights and better understanding in the processes behind uh, diseases and also the progression of, of diseases. And of course, this will have great uh, benefits for the patients. And there are thousands of publications uh, coming out all the time but the problem seemed to be to transfer biomarker discovery to uh, clinical practice. So what are the major challenges of biomarker discovery? Well, first here is just a figure showing what I was just saying, that the last 10 years, how the increase in publications have increased, but the level of uh, patents from validated biomarkers are, are uh, staying the same. Uh, staying the same. So back to the challenges. Well, of course, first you have to have access to a well stratified patient uh, samples. And sometimes it might be a requirement, a requirement that you need a high number of samples, especially if you're perhaps investigating rare events or slowly progressing diseases. Also, sometimes you might have limited amount of the sample in volume, uh, which can make it difficult to, to even motivate the use of the precious samples. Sensitivity and specificity uh, are probably the most important factors. In other words, that you need to uh, assure that you correctly identify a high proportion of the true events in a sample. And unfortunately, since many biomarkers do not have these criteria, there might instead be a need for combinatorial analysis of more than one biomarker. So there are a number of different technologies that you could uh, use for discovery of biomarkers. And with our technology and the Prosit Multiplex product, we address, to start with, uh, two major challenges namely analysis of multiple biomarkers in a low sample volume simultaneously. So more precisely, we detect 92 human proteins in one microliter sample simultaneously. We have a high screening capacity, so we can analyze thousands of samples per week. We offer an, an exceptional specificity thanks to PEA technology that I will come back to in a, in a moment. And finally, we have a sensitivity down to picogram per milliliter levels. So our innovative technology then, proximity extension assay, it consists uh, basically in three core steps. So first of all, we have matched antibodies uh, carrying unique DNA arms and then they bind to the protein of interest in a sample. Upon binding of the two antibodies to, to the proteins, the two arms will be brought into close proximity where they extend and give rise to an amplicon 
of a unique sequence. So finally, these amplicons are subsequently detected by a microfluidic uh, real-time PCR from a uh, fluidine called Biomark instrument. And the raw data is thereafter processed with the software we are using for normalization, uh, quality control of data, and uh, subsequent data analysis and multivariate statistical analysis. And in summary, we generate results within 24 hours and the hands-on time is less than three hours. So coming back to specificity, traditional multiplex immunoassays generally have problems with cross-reactivity from the antibodies. And we offer a solution to these problems, to this problem since we require that both antibodies are binding to the proteins as well as the matched pair of DNA tags. Only uh, if those two events happen, we generate a signal. So with the development of this technology, we wanted to, of course, go up in multi multiplex degree and, uh, and scale it up. So that we did, we went from six plex, six plex up to the current 96 plex uh, multiplex degree. And we were very happy to see that the performance remained the same. So with this, we have designed biomarker panels with a focus on oncology, cardiovascular, and inflammatory biomarkers. And each panel uh, enables analysis of 92 proteins. So which are the proteins that we include in our panels? First of all, we are working very closely with research experts within the different fields to assure that we select the most relevant uh, proteins. Also, we require the ability to detect both healthy and disease uh, protein levels in samples. And we also have very high demands on the performance of the assay uh, in terms of sensitivity, specificity, recovery, and so on. And finally, we also always include a number of more exploratory markers or perhaps hot new markers uh, that could, that is prev previously unknown to be relevant within the different uh, research fields. So we believe that this can accelerate the, uh, the success rate uh, of finding new biomarkers. And that could be important, of course, for better understanding of, of the biology in general, but also the mechanism behind diseases. Also for, for linking uh, lifestyle with uh, health and disease. And I'm sure that Ulf will tell us more about that in a moment. And moreover, uh, identifying potential new drugs and prognostic and predictive biomarkers. Uh, that could also lead to, to better understanding of uh, disease outcomes. So these the two following slides will show you some examples of uh, some uh, studies using Prosec Multiplex that have been run during the last year. Um, so one study aimed to identify prognostic markers in breast cancer patients that suffered from different uh, disease outcomes. Another compared, uh, compared different uh, a treatment for in leukemia patients, and that you can see in the, in the figure there to, to the right. Uh, so the wanted to see the, the difference between um, treated and untreated patients. And as you can see, there were seemed to be a very clear clustering between these two groups. Uh, other studies include finding predicted markers in brain tumor patients, and also there were one studying cytokine levels in cerebrospinal fluid uh, in bipolar disorder patients. More examples here. Uh, one predicted vascular uh, events in a large cohort of, of high-risk individuals. Another uh, was monitoring, you see the lower picture there to the, to the right, 
uh, aimed to, to monitor the biomarker levels after acute trauma to the head um, that was done in microdialysis samples. And also there to the lower left picture, you can see how a number of, I think, nine proteins, how they were down and up regulator at, uh, when comparing healthy uh, controls with patients suffering from myocardial infarction. And another very interesting study is, as well is a prospective investigation of CVD events, cardiovascular disease events in, in seniors to, I, to identify predictive risk markers. And I just will tell you a little bit more about this ongoing study. It's done in, in Uppsala. Uh, so they have selected 1,000 random subjects at the age of 70. And then they have taken follow-up samples after five and 10 years. And during this 10-year period, they have seen that 10% have suffered from myocardial infarction and 10% of stroke. So now they would like to see who are those 10% and if it's something that they had in common already 10 years ago that could have predicted the events. So that's a very interesting study. I'm really looking forward to see the results and the data analysis is ongoing as we speak. So prosic multiplex works on a number of different biological materials, of course the traditional plasma and serum, but also more uh, uncommon as dry blood spots, synovial fluid, CSF I mentioned, uh, and other types as well. And with the use of extensive controls, we are able to, to monitor every step of the process. Uh, and all of these controls are, can be monitored in every sample that is being run. And besides these controls, we also have controls that are included on every plate to, um, to assure that we have low variation between runs. So it is available as ready-to-use kit and fee-for-service. So beside analysis service at Olink, we also have a, a SciLife platform in Uppsala that uh, provides service for our customers. So then yes, my last slide is just summarizing what I've been talking about. Uh, we have a high throughput, cost-effective way of, of doing pr protein profiling, consuming limited or minimal amount of, of material. We assure high quality data from the technology. And we have designed pre-validated panels of protein biomarkers. And more are coming uh, already this year. And I can just uh, finally say that currently we have been screening over 50,000 samples. So with that, I would like to leave the word to Ulf Gillensen. And the title of his talk is Strong Effects of Genetic and Lifestyle Factors on Biomarker Variation and Use of Personalized Cutoffs. <laughs>